liquid metal inside my 2017 MacBook Pro, and by so doing, improved the thermal performance of the laptop by over 15% from the stock thermal pace. That's a lot. And since then, my computer has been both as quiet and as cool as a cucumber. Yes, cucumbers are quiet. But has the magical conductive liquid caused any damage inside of my machine? That's the real question, because there are warnings all over about how dangerous liquid metal can be. So you pay $10 per month and you get access to thousands of dollars of premium and beloved Mac apps. Click the link in the video description below. It has been excellent. However, I've become a little nervous in recent weeks because, well, for one, the laptop is not a stationary one, so the liquid metal has more than certainly been jostled about. Though the conformal coating that I applied is supposed to create an invisible barrier between the very conductive metal and sensitive electronics. And I'm also nervous about the fact that liquid metal is highly corrosive to aluminum. Gallium, the main ingredient in liquid metal, can penetrate the porous grain structure of aluminum and it chemically amalgamates. It basically breaks down the strength of the aluminum, as demonstrated to us by our friends at Business Insider. Now, we only applied liquid metal to the CPU die itself and to the thin copper shim, which is attached to the cooler's heat pipe. None of that is aluminum. However, if the liquid metal has spread around a bit, as I suspect it might, it may have come in contact with the cooler mounting assembly, which is aluminum. Y eso no sería bueno. Entonces, I mean, so, it's time to pull this thing apart again and see if there's any damage. First, we've got to shut her down, and then we will flip the laptop upside down undo the rear screws, and then remove the rear cover, which requires that you slide the lid away from the hinge before lifting. Once you get a hang of this thing, it's pretty easy, but holy smokes, the first few times are really hard. Anyways, the rest of the disassembly is actually pretty straightforward, boring, and relatively easy. In fact, it only took me 8 minutes and 30 seconds, so I'm pretty proud of myself for that. Now it comes time to actually pull the cooling assembly away from the motherboard. Well, I guess we've got to unscrew the tightening fasteners at the back. That's boring. Come on, hurry up. Let's go, let's go. Okay, now it's time for the moment of truth. And it actually looks pretty great. Well, the die, that is. We'll get to the cooler in a second. The liquid metal on the die is just as liquidy as it was when I applied it, which is great because good liquid metal, like the thermal grizzly conductor knot I used, only dries out if it's exposed to direct airflow, which if your cooler is seated properly, it won't be. The liquid also hasn't shifted around at all, which is excellent, and I was probably worried a little bit over nothing. That said, I am a little concerned about the copper cooler. 